Hey everybody, this is Dr. Eberly, and I wanted to walk you through a few things on the syllabus um, so that we don't have to do it on the first day of class. Um, this is page one, and the most important things I'll point out here is our class uh, meeting time and location, so where we're going to have lecture and lab as well, um, broken up by your course registration number, so make sure you know what CRN you are and what time we're meeting. Um, additionally, I want to point out that my office is located in the Mannion Annex. Okay, so that's not actually in Mannion Hall. The Annex is right between Mannion Hall and the Print Center. So if you're standing out in front of Mannion Hall, uh, the Annex is just to the right of it. There's a little white door um, with glass windows, and you'll walk through there, and my office is 123 Mannion Annex right inside there. And here is when you can find me in my office. Mondays, uh, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And if these times don't work for you, I'm happy to schedule and set up a, a time that does. So just shoot me an email. Um, give me a few options um, as to some times that do work for you throughout the week. And we can always find time to meet and get your questions answered that way. Um, other than that, you can read over the course objectives and prerequisites. Uh, the next most important thing would be our course materials. So make sure that you have acquired our correct textbook. Um, fundamentals of general organic and biochem, eighth edition, and then secondly, our active chem access code. Uh, you can get it from the bookstore. There's other places as well, and you get temporary access online, but you, ha you do have to make sure you pay for that eventually uh, within the first two weeks. And then lastly, um, the uh, lab eye protection. Okay, so you need some lab goggles, not just any kind. Make sure they're the ANSI approved um, our department does sell them, and I posted in a little announcement of that on our Blackboard um, homepage of the times and the location and the cost and everything if you need to buy some on campus. Um, lastly, a calculator for this class, okay? Uh, don't go buy an expensive one. If you have already a nice expensive one, that's fine. It'll do. But um, if you don't, just go get a cheap one from Walmart, something that has a log button on it, okay? Um, so... If it has that, we just can't use our cell phones on exams and things like that. So you need a small calculator that has a log button. Um, next, this is what you can expect every week. So weekly assignments and content. Um, I think the major thing, you can read over lectures, quizzes, textbook reading. But the major thing I want to point out is point four here, homework assignments. So we're going to do our homework online using the active chemistry software. And I just want to point out the steps to actually enrolling. So once you get your access code, um, step one is you're going to log in to Blackboard. And then two, you're going to click on the active chem tab. Um, it's, the, it's on the left side of the homepage. Once you uh, click on that, it'll take you to the web link. Okay, also titled active chemistry. Click on that web link and then it should take you through the steps of entering your access code and enrolling um, in the online homework platform. All right. And uh, uh, the lecture schedule on page six shows you when all the homework assignments are due. And they're usually due at 11.59 p.m. by the end of the day um, on the days that they're due. Uh, the next important thing here is with our labs. So we're, we're doing two different kinds of labs this semester. We'll have dry labs, meaning we're just working. We have a printed out worksheet that has content, problems, practice um, that we will work through together in lab. And uh, you'll just, most of them I'll print out for you, but the wet lab assignments you will need to print out and bring. Uh, but most dry lab assignments I will print out and bring for you, okay? Um, the wet labs, we will actually be using uh, chemicals, all right? And because of that, I want to pause here and scroll down to the very last page. Um, there is certain clothing that is and is not acceptable on a wet lab day, okay? Now, this doesn't apply to dry labs, but for wet lab days, um, you must wear pants, you must wear closed-toed shoes, and you have to have your goggles, all right? So what you cannot wear, we don't allow crop tops, no midriff shown, um, all the skin has to be covered, um, and Crocs, unfortunately, are not considered appropriate closed-toed shoes because they have all the holes in them. Um, so if you're not wearing these things, this is not us trying to be mean, but students can be dismissed for not wearing the right kind of clothing. Um, this keeps you safe. This keeps us safe and everybody else. So please make sure that um, every little lab here with an asterisk is a wet lab. So these are the days that you will need to make sure to wear the proper clothing. All right. Let me go back up to our labs right here. Um, I think that's the most important thing I want to talk about there. Um, we are going to have SI as well. So that's point number six here. Um, 
whoops. And our SI instructor is awesome. He was with me in the fall and is with us again in the spring. So I'll introduce him the first day of class and talk more about his sessions and all that. The most important thing to know is that um, he's going to be in class with us every time we meet. He's there uh, going over that he's aced the course before. So he really is a huge friend to you, a huge resource to you, and it's to your advantage to take a, um, to participate in SI with Lucas. So other than that, um, really quick, I will offer study sessions. These essentially are reviews. So I'll offer a review of exam content prior to each exam. So usually it's about one uh, leading up to an exam. And we'll go over as much information as we can pack into that, usually about 50 minutes. Um, I usually send out a Google form and get a majority vote on what the best time for that is. So it may not fit everybody's schedule, um, but I go by majority. And if you can come to those, um, I think those are usually very helpful to students. So they're optional, by the way. They're not, they're not mandatory since they occur outside of lecture in lab time. All right, uh, here is the breakdown uh, of all the assignments and the points and everything. Um, so I will be sure to enter these on Blackboard as we go throughout the semester so that you see where you stand um, grade-wise all semester long. If you have any questions about that, you can come to me. Uh, I want to point out one thing, that we're going to do 11 labs. Each lab is 15 points, but I do drop one lab. Okay, so I'll talk about this later with attendance and what happens if you miss a lab or something like that. Um, but I'll go ahead and drop one. So if you miss one lab, then know that it won't be held against you. Uh, Blackboard is already set up to do that, so it'll automatically start from the get-go having that uh, factored in. Okay, um, the rest of page three here, if I can zoom out, is pretty important. So I'm not going to walk through this word by word, but I am going to take a little more time on page three because these are some policies and things that we're all agreeing to. And I typically will get lots of questions about these things. I know that people, you know, unfortunately, inevitably are going to get sick. I have two kiddos that are in public daycare. And um, so we experience it at my house too. But I just want you guys to know how I respond to these things um, so that you're not totally in the dark if you send me an email and I'm not getting back to you very quickly um, and you have a burning question. So uh, first off, my classroom environment, um, it's, it's usually I strive for it to be very fun and relaxed, uh, but we do have a lot to cover this semester and I do want everybody to be fully engaged and benefit from our time together. So for that reason, I ask that you all keep your cell phones on silent and eliminate distractions. There are some people that need to have laptops out and I'm okay with that, but I really ask that you be conscious of how you're using your laptop during lecture time so that it's not distracting you and it's not distracting others. Um, I've had students before who sit through lecture with AirPods in and I've just asked from now on that nobody keep AirPods in during lecture, that you're all fully engaged. Um, and then also, I also know that uh, if you are expecting any urgent news and it's gonna require you to step out of class a little bit early or arrive to class a little bit late, um, I get it, life happens. I just ask that you communicate ahead of time, all right, if that's gonna happen and let me know. And then lastly, just be willing to make a friend in class, that's gonna be to your benefit. And also let me know if you are struggling with something in class or outside of class and you just uh, need a little bit of grace here and there, um, I am your biggest advocate, but I can't help unless you communicate. So please know I'm a safe space to come if you are struggling in or outside of class. Um, okay, this is a big one right here. What happens uh, for a missed exam, quiz, lab? So for quizzes, you can miss one quiz because I do offer one makeup quiz at the end of the semester. So if you miss a quiz, like quiz two or three, um, then at the end of the semester, you can come take the makeup quiz and it will replace that one missed quiz score. And then uh, additional quizzes, though, cannot be made up. So if you're sick multiple times and miss multiple quizzes, after that first missed quiz, those zeros do start counting. Now, that's why I do only make our quizzes five points each, so they're low stakes, but um, they do add up. So uh, being as present as possible in class is really important for that reason. Uh, a missed exam can be made up before the original exam time, okay, not after, at my discretion. Um, if you know you're going to miss an exam for a valid and significant reason, uh, please email me before the scheduled exam, and then we can arrange your makeup exam time. Um, I don't allow makeup exams after um, scheduled exam times. But again, just email me, communicate with me, and... Um, one other thing. Oh, if you are going to miss um, 
a dry lab and you won't be able to turn it in at the end of the lab time, then you can use a late pass if you have to miss that dry lab day and assignment, okay? Because I only hand out the assignment in the dry lab. So if you need that assignment, um, you can use a late pass and get that. Uh, but I do not have makeup options for missing a wet lab. And the reason is, is during a wet lab, you are collecting data. So I don't have any other way to get you authentic data. You have to come in and collect that and do the experiment. Um, so please make every effort to be present for wet lab. However, I want to remind you that this is, this is the reason. I just know p with sickness and um, things like that, that inevitably there are times where students miss a wet lab. And so that's why I allow you to drop one. Um, so don't panic if you do have to miss one wet lap. Um, oh, this is really important too, and a thing students really appreciate. Your total percentage on your homework assignments. So you have 10 homework assignments, 10 points each. So total you have 100 points worth of homework. And because of that, they can replace one 100-point exam score. So all my exams are 100 points except for the final. So at the end of the semester, if you do a good job and you take your homework seriously, um, your homework percentage can replace one lower exam score. However, it cannot replace your final exam score since the final's worth 200 points. And also, if it is a benefit to your grade, your final exam percentage, so if you get, you know, uh, 180 points out of 200, which would be a 90% on the final exam, I will uh, replace another low exam score with your final percentage if it's to your benefit. So essentially, you are allowed to drop two exam scores if, if you take your homework seriously and have a great homework grade and do decent on the final exam, um, which can really help uh, final grades at the end of the semester. So keep that in mind. Now that doesn't mean that you should not take every exam seriously, um, but those are there uh, just because, again, if somebody's sick and misses an exam, I, I rely on this policy um, to help them out, okay? so that I don't have to be the judge of somebody's, um, anyways. Okay, late work. I know that life happens and uh, some weeks are more hectic than others. So each student, this is really important, each student will be allowed two late passes that can be used not on everything, but you could use it on a homework or turning in a lab assignment. And this doesn't apply to attending a lab. It doesn't excuse you from lab. But um, if you need a, a few extra hours or days to turn that assignment in, um, you can email me. So please email me with the title of your email saying late pass with your late na or last name. Um, email me prior to the due date. That's really important to me as well. Uh, email me prior to the due date if you know you're going to need some extra time and then uh, we can work around and uh, give you some extra time on that. And I do keep track of how many passes everybody uses throughout the semester. Um, oh, attendance policy. So I don't think I need to read all this, but um, you will have these little one question quizzes on Blackboard. So at the end of every lecture, sometimes at the beginning, I'll have you pull your phone out or a device and hop on Blackboard, log in um, and to the attendance folder and take the attendance quiz. Um, it does shut off 15 minutes after lecture. So if you forget to do it, um, but you know you were in class, shoot me an email letting me know that you were in class. Uh, but please be diligent to not forget to do these. Um, they're participation points. So even if you get it wrong, I will go into Blackboard at a later time, usually by the end of the week or early the following week, and I will update those. And if you got a zero out of one, I will give you the point um, for just being in class, okay? Because it's just for attendance. The other important thing about attendance is that if you don't show evidence of attending class or completing these one question quizzes in the first five days, you can be dropped for non-attendance and really important, if you miss more than three consecutive lectures or two consecutive labs, um, you can also be dropped from the course this way. Um, the reason I've added this in and have this policy is because students that tend to not pass the class had a problem with attending dry lab days. All right, so I really um, am fighting for everybody to attend dry lab days and um, do the dry lab. Now, you will not be turning uh, those dry labs in to me via paper you won't be handing any paper to me you will be turning everything in on blackboard um, so students tend to think that they can just do that at home but you are really at a detriment there because you are not getting your questions answered you're not um, getting to know people in class um, there's just many many reasons I ask and demand and require that everybody show up on wet lab and dry lab days 
So be aware of those attendance policies and um, be present in class. Other than that, I think the rest of this you can read over. Uh, the last thing I want to point out is down here on page six. This huge um, lecture schedule is for you. It shows you every day we're meeting, what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be talking over. So if you miss class, come to this schedule, see the topic that we covered, what chapter it's in. Um, and then the assigned reading here tells you what section in the textbook that information is found. So I would encourage you to read over that. The textbook reading is really light reading because it's broken up across so many days. So it's not a lot. It's not a huge ask to ask you to read this to get the information and then look over the lecture notes. I also encourage you to get lecture notes from a friend. If you um, miss, I'm going to create a course group me. You can reach out on the group me and ask for somebody to send you notes. Students did that a whole lot last fall and that was very helpful. Uh, there's no surprises in my class. You know when every exam is. You know when every quiz is. You know when every homework is. Um, there's really nothing special about the quizzes in bold. So sorry, some of them are in bold. Some of them are not. Um, that's just, I forgot to make them all the same type of font. But um, you know when everything's due. You know when everything's going to be. And then lastly, I have some recommended textbook problems. So at the back of every chapter is a huge list of problems, more than you could ever do. Um, but I've selected, I've hand selected a few that I think are beneficial for you to practice. So if you do all the homework and you want extra practice, uh, especially leading up to an exam, I encourage you to do these. Um, I tell students that you know you're ready for an exam when you can put away all your notes and work through these problems. So for example, with chapter one, if you sit and work all these problems and are consistently getting them right, then you know you're ready for exam one. Um, other than that, uh, our lab schedule showing you which lab we're doing every week, which ones are wet labs, which ones are dry labs, which ones have pre-labs and which ones don't um, is all on here for you guys to reference. So please print these out, keep them somewhere you're going to see them or reference them often so that you know what to expect and come in ready every day to engage with the material. Um, other than that, I'm really looking forward to having you all in class and I will see you soon.